wanted to jump on this as quick as possible because you were eating an apple before our interview. <laughs> I know, right? Got to eat it. <laughs> yeah, well, you can do whatever you want when you're a Juno Award winner and a 2024 Juno nominee. You, like I said, you can do whatever you want. Congratulations. Thanks, Rudy. I know it's really fun. This this one was actually really unexpected. Why do you say that, do you think? Well, well, hold on. Before we get answer that question, let's go back so folks know exactly what we're talking about. Uh, and again, congratulations. What are you nominated for? I'm nominated for Vocal Jazz Album of the Year. And, and actually, it's a double nomination as in 2019, Rudy, because I'm also nominated with Alison Au's um, Migrations Project, which is it, for Jazz Album of the Year in the group category. So I'm part of her group. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Double whammy. I love that. But let's get to the first one. What was the album? Your Requests. Okay. Now let's go back to what you were saying earlier a moment ago when you said that um, this was a surprise. Why would, it, why would it be a surprise? You know, it's the first jazz standards album that I've ever released. So my previous two... <gasps> That's right. Yeah, yeah. So the previous two, including the one that, that got the Juno in 2019, were mostly original songs. And so in some ways, this felt like a very different artistic statement. And mm -hmm. uh, and so when it got nominated, I was totally surprised and thrilled. I saw you at the red carpet, but I couldn't get a chance to do the interview with you uh, when the nominations came out. Well, how did it feel when you saw your name pop up there? Because you, you've you been through this before, because I said you're a Juno Award winner. You know that when they say, hey, we'd like you to come down to the CBC building because we have announcements that are going to be happening. You kind of have a feeling something's going to happen. Well, do you want the backstory on that, Rudy? Because yeah. As you know, I'm a CBC host. And yes. I do know, I know of the odd artist who doubles in the hosting realm and artist realm. And there have been people in the past who have been invited and could have been up for a nomination, but in fact, were not nominated. And Ooh. yes, yes. So I was holding it very loosely. And my husband and co-producer, Ben Whitman, he was with me at my side. And they ran through the list and I think, I think Alex was nominated first and then Katie, Katie George, I should say their last names as well. And then Dominique Fizeme and, and now we're getting number four. And um, I think it was Danielle Bessels. It might've been Danielle first, mm -hmm. but at that point, Ben and I looked at each other <laughs> like, oh, this might not be my year. And, and I was okay with that, you know, because there were, there were so many worthy artists who did not get nominated. Right. So when they announced me last, we kind of exhaled and, um, you know, breathed, breathed a bit of a sigh of relief only because we were there and we weren't entirely sure. And it's almost a bit of a saving face moment because as you just described, most people who get invited, it's a little bit of a wink, wink, you know, most folks are nominated. It equates to a nomination. And so if I hadn't been nominated, it would have been like, all right, everybody, you know, <laughs> congratulations. And, and that would have been fine, totally fine. But it was, it was a wonderful surprise and boost to, to get that nomination. Now you talked about the difference per, uh, professionally, personally though, what do you think the difference is from your your Juno nomination before and when to this Juno nomination? You know, there's an element to it on a personal level that feels even more special to me this time around. Um, yeah, I would say it's been a hard season. There, there have been things going on behind the scenes, professionally and personally, that have been tough. Yeah. And so even though we do not put all our eggs in the Juno Awards basket as artists, right? You can't because we, we create work because it's in us to create and we wanna connect with listeners and fellow musicians and that's what matters. However, I think all of us would agree that getting that industry nod is so affirming and so the timing was very sweet. It was very sweet, yeah. Well, much deserved, congratulations on that. 
Uh, has Humber co contacted you? For folks who don't know that we're both Humber alumnus. I think that's the word. Um, have they contacted you yet on this one? They haven't. I mean, they might. It's possible that they have and it somehow fell between the cracks because mm -hmm. it's just been a very busy and overwhelming time, Rudy. Um, so I, I, my answer is I'm not entirely sure. I should probably well, search my inbox. <laughs> I know they were busy because they had an, uh, a jazz show that was, uh, I think it was a week or so ago because I was supposed to do the interview. I couldn't do the interview. So they may have been busy with that, but at least I know that the show that you did with Humber, I was able to attend. Talk a little bit about that, please. Cause that was very cool. Oh, that was really special. So they were celebrating 50 years of the Humber music program. So a few years ago, Humber as a college, um, you know, across all programs celebrated 50 years, but then the music program specifically celebrated 50 years last year, right around this time. And so as uh, an alumna, I was invited to be the headlining performer. And I got to, yeah, perform with my trio as well, and with a bunch of special guests, all of whom were either existing faculty or former former faculty. And it was such a beautiful celebration. Humber has gone through some growing pains over the past yeah. few years. And I remain a super proud alumna. I think that there are so many things that they are doing right now that are incredibly exciting. And it was just a great honor and a full circle moment because actually it was my 25th anniversary, I think, since I left Humber as a graduate. So I was celebrating my own personal anniversary as they were celebrating theirs. And so it, it was really neat. Yeah. And and so the students got to perform, too. They were the for the first part of it, the first half of I remember. They were and they were incredible. I remember yeah. saying, thinking and saying from the stage, the future is bright. <laughs> because I was knocked out by the talent, like knocked out. So yeah, no, they, cool. they, they were amazing. I'm just curious, did any, any of them come up to you and, and ask for any advice? Just curious. Oh, you know what? No. I, Cause I know you were snapping a lot of pictures. I know that. Yeah. So, you know, what was really fun and this seems to happen every time I either perform at a school or co collaborate um, with a, a secondary or post-secondary program, um, which I've been doing a lot lately, there's always a flurry of Instagram follows and Instagram yeah. messages. That seems to be the platform that Gen Z and whatever the generate the more recent generations are more comfortable with. Yeah. And so uh, they won't always approach me in person, um, but they'll you know send me a, a message over Instagram, and then we start a conversation there. And uh, yeah, again, it's something that I really value. So what are the plans for Halifax? Um, are you doing anything there? Do you have any shows, anything with CBC? What's going on? Yeah, so uh, again, people will be hearing it here first. I was invited to perform at the after party hosted by Music oh. Counts. But I said no, I said no, Rudy, because um, we've got, we've just got a lot of stuff going on, as I mentioned, behind the scenes. And so my husband will be with me. That'll be super fun because he wasn't with me in 2019. Um, he couldn't be. Uh, he and my son were in Hawaii. <laughs> and so Josh, our son, would have killed us if we'd canceled that vacation for the sake of the Junos. So I remember they were whale watching at the exact moment that my win was announced. So Ben will be with me in Halifax. He's going to walk the red carpet with me. We're choosing our outfits and doing all that fun stuff. Um, and uh, and no doubt we'll, we'll have a great time seeing you and fellow nominees and all the music industry people. It's, it's a really fun occasion in Canada. There's no question about it. And anything, what's happening after the Junos? Uh... Any tours, more music? Yeah. yeah. So we have been working on my Winter Songs project for almost three years now. Wow. And that'll finally come out later this year. But that's what we're right in the thick of wrapping up. And then I've got more tour dates. So we are out this, uh, we're, we're heading out west before the Junos. And then right after the Junos, um, we head back out west to California to collaborate with more schools out that way and to perform um, just in the in the LA and San Diego areas. And uh, and then we'll be back home for a bit. And then we've got a show in Mississauga with the South, I think they're called the Temple 
big bet. It's related to the Salvation Army. So that I know fun. which one you're talking about. I know which one yeah, you're talking about. Is but, uh, big man, I think is, is something it? like that. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, last question: Do you have room for two Junos in case? Yeah. You have room for two? Yes, of course I do. <laughs> okay, just 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 making sure, you know, just you're in so case you need to start dusting off a spot somewhere. So, so well, you wonder if Katie George is going to have to make room for three. If she wins this year, that'll be three years in a row. I don't even know if that's happened in Juno history. It probably has, but certainly not often. Well, either way, I'm so happy for you. Yes, I'm going to be down there. So I'll see you in the press room, red carpet, somewhere there, blah, blah, blah. And uh, looking forward to uh, congratulations. And I will see you in Halifax.